Now, will Dan one choose to prioritize the TF? Ooh, okay, I actually like this adaptation a lot from Suning. They're choosing to leave the Orn open. They're saying that they do have an answer if Nogari decides to go for that pick. But you imagine in this situation that the Greys will be the lock. And of course, even without that Kindred being banned away, you had uh, already alluded to the fact that looking at Canyon, looking at that jungle pick, Graves was an option that they wanted to consider. It is now locked in, and Suning need to find an answer. Now, I wonder if Suning will continue their trend of prioritizing Ezreal. They did this a lot against top esports, but that was large in part because they wanted to take it away from Jackie Love. However, it is a strong weak side champion. The other option, of course, is the Ash, but I like this lock in. It shows comfort from Suning in game one. It's something that Huan Feng is very comfortable on as well. And now, given that the Graves has already been locked in, they can immediately answer with the Kindred as well, knowing that they have SOFM on a champion that he's very comfortable on and is a pretty good matchup. And of course, for Huan Feng, Ezreal is his most played champion at the World Championship. Five games, five wins. He has played Jin five times as well. Looking at Sword Art's Leona, it is one of his most played champions in the World Championship okay. five. And also, it is his most played championship competitively over the last two years with 23 competitive games. Oof. Okay, wow. The the picks coming in fast from Dam One. So to quickly talk about this Leona, as you rightly said, it is a highly contested pick about from both of these teams. They love the Leona, but we know that Dan One has an answer to it in the form of the set. They've played it multiple times before. They're willing to play things like Ash said into it, and we'll see if Suning looks to try and remove some of those options. Meanwhile, Dan One have gone for a very straightforward team fight comp. Oriana, given that the Syndra has been removed, is a pretty safe blind pick, and they've also got the Orn to now they can just ban away counters because Suning are not locking any in. So Dan One have already a very well-rounded, strong top side of the map with the ability to save their bot lane counters for later. So this is the second time that Angel will be playing Azir here at the World Championship, and I'm really interested to see what happens in the top lane. With Phase 2 bans coming in, the possibility of removing some of those matchups into Orn is something Damwon could consider. And straight out the gate, Beryl will lose access to Thresh as uh, the bottom lane for Suning is already locked in. I wouldn't be surprised to see a set removed as well, but I really want to highlight this Azir pick. I think it is a great option for Suning because already you have this very long range composition coming out from Suning. A comp that kind of keeps you at arm's length, which when you look at a Graves that wants to get in your face, wants to close that gap with the amount of disengage that they have with the Azir, with Ezreal being able to shift away, that hard engage from the Orn becomes a lot weaker as well. So I think the Suning are already adapting well to what they're seeing down one bring out. And now their game plan is to give their bot lane the best possible matchup. Now, what are you leaning towards for SOFM? Jarvan has been banned away. We saw that on Countdown just a little bit earlier today. One of the Red Bull plays from Worlds to celebrate. And you can see the coaching and support staff running through the options. They're going to ban away Ghost's Caitlyn and obviously that Thresh from earlier. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised to see Izzy Lee Sen. I think that when I think about the Kindred, she is a pretty short range champion, unless she can get a large number of marks. And when we're already looking at this long range comp, what Suning I think would like is more disengage and ability to offer more peel, protect the Azir and the Ezreal on the backline, and make sure that this on ultimate can't really threaten them. So I think that if they do go for that, you can just use the Lee Sen kick to provide more peel, provide more disengage, and basically make it much harder for the Graves to access the backline. Remember, end has already done a great breakdown that showcases that SOFM doesn't play Lee like many others. He is the tank Lee. His role is to be obnoxious, be a frontline by time. But of course, there are a number of other options. Ooh. Things like the Shen jungle is something that he has brought out before and can offer a very similar form of peel in the way of his ultimate. River Shen or Top Shen, options available to them can decide in a moment or two. Now we'll look at those last two picks here from Dom One Gaming. They need to find themselves their AD carry and their support for Ghost and for Barrel. I imagine the Ash Pantheon or Ash Set will be the direction that they're looking at. The great thing about Set against Leona is when the Leona comes in, he then gets to take the Leona right back out with his ultimate. It's a combo that Dawn have used a lot. We saw a fair amount of Set from Barrel so far in this tournament, but they are going to stick with the more aggressive option in the Pantheon. Beryl is a player that in the early game loves to roam, he loves to cover for his lanes, and he loves to provide that setup. And we'll talk a little bit more about that game as we move into the final pick this soon. Give me a guess on what Beryl's win rate is. Don't bother. 100% career win loss on that champion. 11 and 0. He's played it twice at Worlds. 
And Barrel impacting the lanes is something we have seen many, many times before. The last lock-in is going to be Wukong. So Wukong into Orn. I'm furling my eyebrows right now. What do you think of the pick? I mean, I'm a little surprised. Usually you pick uh, the Wukong into an AD top matchup. <laughs> Wukong does a surprising amount of AP damage in lane. It can actually trade pretty effectively. I imagine that uh, Orn will actually be able to do quite well. But you know what? I'm going to trust Bin on this. If there's any top laner that's very fair. That in knows, the world yeah. final game one, yes. <laughs> you know, he's clearly. We know that he's confident on this pick. We know that Suning like to draft carry top laners for Bin, and he already played this in the semifinal up against Top Esports, and he had a fantastic performance on it. They have like quite a few different options because they have some dive with the Shen Wukong combo, but they also have a pretty long range comp with the Azir and the Ezreal. So I feel like the Suning are going to look to play a very straightforward front to back comp. And I think that Danwon's going to look to do the same thing. So I imagine that we're actually going to get a pretty slow early game. And a lot of this game is going to be focused on the team fights. Team fights, early dragons, see yep. if there's going to be fights around those objectives. Taking a look at some of the research as far as Bin and the Wukong goes, he has played eight times this year. A win ratio of around 60 3%. He's played it once here at the World Championship. So it is a pick that he falls back to very, very frequently. And you can see in the stadium from Shanghai, this is game one in the best of five, the last series of the World Championship for a shot at hoisting the Summoner's Cup. It cannot be understated how different the environment is now in a stadium with 6,000 fans very clearly in favor of Su Ning as well. And it's going to be up to Su Ning to show us what they can do with this River Shen, with this Wukong. Various, we talked so much about draft coming into this, how important it was going to be. How do you feel after you see the pieces that are put together? Wow. The positives, in my perspective, for Su Ning is that they've got comps that they were able to play against top. When they played against top in that best of five, it was very Drake focused, very team fight focused, and I felt like that if they can play that style, that's their best opportunity for excess, uh, success. Whereas the big concern I have is this bot lane. Beryl being on the Pantheon, they're a very aggressive two versus two, and I feel like that Jackie Love and Yuyanja didn't punish this bot lane from suiting as hard as they could have, but you know that a duo like Ghost and Beryl will. So I'm going to be keeping my eyes on how aggressive they're going to look to be in this two versus two with the Pantheon, how Beryl roams around the map and what these two junglers, what their plan is going to be in the early game. Oh, a lot of pressure and in the World Championship that has been so heavily determined by your jungler's ability to impact the game. SOFM taking on Canyon. Damwon Gaming taking on Suning. The 2020 League of Legends World Championship Final. Welcome to the Rift for game one in this best of five. Straight out the gates, catching a quick glimpse here. Yeah, defensive starts across the board. It doesn't look like any shenanigans afoot of Canyon. Just step forward, Bin and SOFM are waiting just behind the river entrance, but I don't think anything will play out here. So you can see the two wards in the bottom right of your screen, just at the entrance of the river from both supports to try and cover. It looks like Beryl actually went for a very early back. I wonder if he's actually grabbed himself the sweeper. We'll be able to have a... Yes, he has. Um, so he's going to have that option. And something that we've been seeing a lot throughout Worlds is actually leashless starts. The main reason why you do this is to not give your opposition that much information. But as you can see, there's going to be a leash on both sides. For Sooning, it's going to be a leash on the blue buff to assist the Shen with the clear. But this is going to give priority for Ghost and Beryl immediately in the lane. Meanwhile, Nogri is going to be doing the same thing. Now, I imagine the main reason for this is because it makes sense for SOFM to want to path towards the top side. He has a carry top lane. He wants to make sure that this lane is stable and safe for him. So given that the bot lane knows that their jungler is going to be pathing away from them, they're going to be playing much more on the weak side. They've already accepted and conceded yes. this lane is not going to have that much cover. So we can already see he's likely going to do a full clear on the bot side of the map, then path towards top, whereas Canyon is going to do a very similar thing as he paths towards the bot side of the map. Now let's see whether or not Ben and Nogri can... Sydney so shenanigans afoot. If SOFM is able to get some early advantage there in that lane, can absolutely play into his favor. If you look at the minimap, Angel already starting to shove into Oriana early on right now. 
Showmaker is going to start to fall backwards. And this is something that you would expect as well, because SOFM wants to try and path towards the top Scuttle Crab when he has a pushing mid and a pushing top. That's the easiest crab for him to secure. And meanwhile, Canyon is going to look to do something, exactly the same thing, except on the bottom side of the map. Already, Beryl is looking for a Roman mid, using the priority bot level two to alleviate some of the pressure. Angel, though, just going to disengage. And we're going to be seeing a lot of this, quick shot, because Canyon as a player, he doesn't actually gank for his lanes a lot. What he likes to do is focus on himself, make sure that he's farming up, and it's kind of how the meta is. But that's also what Down One is so good at. But sometimes your lanes are not in a great state. Sometimes your lanes need assistance from someone else. And this is where Barrel comes in. What Down One will do is they will ring the Barrel <laughs> when they need help. So, hold it. Okay. Ring the Barrel? They will ring the Barrel. If top lane needs a little bit of assistance, Barrel will base, he'll look to roam. <laughs> up top. If the mid lane needs to be pushed out, as we just saw, he will run, and that is ringing the barrel from down one. So keep an eye on that throughout this series, because it's going to happen a lot, because Canyon, all they care about is making sure that he gets as much farm as possible. Look, already hitting that level four. He's done a full clear. He's going to get his Scuttle Crab. Now he can look to reset, or he can look to get a little bit of deep vision, maybe even look to contest the enemy grow. And exactly like you talked about there, so we're firming Canyon's pathing and focus. I will be keeping my eye on that mini map, and Vedius, you let me know when you think Dumb one are gonna ring the barrel as it were on this pantheon with that grand starfall he will have an ability to impact these lanes and when you combo with with an oriana or an orno canyon's graves there is a lot of cc and or damage to work with but we consistently see Huan Fung and Sword Art being pushed in. They're down eight CS already. If all three are picked up, it's still a five advantage to be expected. And also because of the fact that they have that very strong leash with SOFM on the blue bar. Certainly that. Now, as you can look across the map, you'll see that the bot lane for Ghost and Barrel right now is not actually that safe. But they've already invested this deep war towards the bot side of the map. So they know exactly where SOFM is and they can react accordingly. They've also got the whole bot river warded. And notice how Showmaker is playing towards the bots side because that's where his vision is so all of down one have the information that they need to continue playing through their lanes and again like they're making sure all the laners are making sure that canyon can just farm freely they want to make sure that he's getting as much farm and xp as possible and you can already see hitting that level five mark has they taken his first base and now they can even look for an early drake given yeah. that mid is pushed and bot is keeping the pressure up and that's something i'm going to keep my eyes on Vedius. you talked in the draft how both of these comps can be played out sort of front to back and you know, you set expectations, which we're seeing. Slightly slower laning phase with uh, maybe a focus on these team fights and, and battles around objectives. The fact that the Cloud Drake has already been started by Canyon. See, with the pressure that Beryl and Ghost have in the bottom lane, they've unlocked the ability to start the Drake off. Showmaker TP'd early, which means Angel's catching a wave. He hasn't been able to back. And this will be an uncontested first Drake going the way of Damwon game. So already in this early game, it might not feel like it, but Damwon already has a number of advantages. Number one, they've been able to use their strong 2v2 in the bot side to generate a lot of pressure. They've been forcing Huan Feng and Sword Art to play very defensively, but also in the top side of the map with the bounce back and the wave. Noggery played very well in the 1v1 and forced the TP out from bit. Now Noggery is going to answer. I didn't think that he needed to, but now it's Sword Art's turn to move around the map. He's gotten his first base off because Barrel was helping, and now Noggery is in a bit of danger. Let's have a look at the minimap and see if anyone is coming to assist already. The barrel is being wrong. He's already <laughs> making his way towards the mid lane, but it looks like Noggery is just going to say, right, I recognize the position that I'm in. My wave is not in a great space, but I'm on. It's fine yeah. if I lose a bit of farm. I can play defensively, and I'll just wait for this wave to come into me. I mean, he had Flash, Call of the Forge God, still had the access to the Bellows Breath. We were watching him for some time, so a difficult gank to pull off, um, you know, opportunistic maybe at best on the side of Suning. And as you've alluded to, Vedia, some early advantages here going the way of uh, Damwon. And when we look across their games, 13 games here played at the World Championship, they pick up the first tower in 85% of their games. I want to see if they can once again secure that first objective and then start to move their uh, uh, pieces around the map. Well, the way in which they're going to do that is going to be the Rift Herald. It spawns in a minute, 15 seconds, and these are the pieces that you're going to be looking at once again. Number one, Beryl. He's always going to be trying to move first. He already moved to help secure the Drake, and that was Sword Art's window to look for a roam where he wasn't able to find anything. But notice that they're continuing to push, 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 and they're always getting this deep vision in the bot side jungle. So when SOFM is pathing up towards top to get his clear, they're getting that vision. Now they know exactly where SOFM is. Yeah. They know where Angel is because he's just done his blue buff. So they're going to look to 
I imagine, try and keep this pressure up, and then have Beryl roam and have Ghost play on the weak side. They may even bring Ghost up with them, something that we have often seen, but they need Beryl there first so that they can look to start that objective. And Vettis, look at the CS difference between Huan Feng and Ghost. It's already at 15, with some minions pushing towards Ghost and Beryl for the first time, it feels like, in seven minutes. One Fung and Sword Art, they're actually able to get past that first barrier. They've been sitting under their tower for so long. Also, a brief note, three minutes to Mountain Drake. That means for game one of our finals, we're going to be playing for Infernal or Ocean Soul, and that will again just increase the pressure to ensure that the, the, the soul is not secured by Damwon on, from the perspective of Sumi. For sure, because I think that this game is ultimately going to come down to a lot of dragon fights, yeah. and with the first dragon already be taken very early, you know that we're going to get to that point where um, first items from both teams, and they're like, okay, let's look to fight, let's look to set up, and already Damwon up towards the top side, they're going to start the Rift Herald on spawn, Beryl has done his reset, as we talked about, Sword Art is going to be a little bit late, but it looks like Canyon is getting a little bit creative here, he's instead, rather than starting off the objective, actually pathing up towards top and I think for the time being he is just sitting outside of vision but Sooning is suspicious instead they're gonna wait Beryl has now arrived as we talked about and now as they're setting up they have the numbers advantage Orianna's is gonna push in mid and let's see if Sooning looked to contest and remember if Damon start a fight SOFM does have access to that stand United so he can jump in at a moment's notice I think Ghost maybe respecting the potential of a dive not level 6 on Sora yet but he's already backed away from that lane from the wave that was away from him at the tower. Canyon will be able to pick up this Rift Herald uncontested. CS advantages again. Ghost in the bottom lane, Bin in the top lane, a very small advantage for the time being. It is a minute and a half till the Dragon. I don't see strong vision yet for either team really around that objective. So let's keep an eye on whether or not Damwon want to start pushing that vision again deep into Suning's jungle to secure a safe mountain drain. Well, what I imagine is that Damwon's going to continue to do what they've been doing pretty much throughout this game, which is path towards bot and then invest more resources there. Try and get a couple more plates into Ghost's back pocket because they don't really care about Nogri. They're just like, hey, you're a tank. Yeah. Your responsibility <laughs> is to team fight. And Nogri's like, okay, I get it. Um, and so I imagine that what they're going to do is try and look for a window where Showmaker will have the push in mid. He's been actually able to go back to base just now, and he's going to grab himself uh, both the tier and the Lost Chapter. Of course, he had one beforehand. But now Azir is going to get the reset, and this is exactly the window that they were looking for. Azir just reset. Orianna now back on the map. Ghost also just picked up the Cutlass, is going to be able to get the push in bot, and now I expect to see push in mid. The return of the bot lane, Canyon grabs his red buff, they throw the Herald bot, and then through that pressure, they're able to convert it into a Drake. It feels like Damwon are just one step ahead Ahead, but it is still deadly close. A thousand, sorry, uh, t at the 10 minute mark, less than 100 gold difference. And SOFM will show his head top at the moment. Cyclone does get chucked down, but look Ooh. at the damage onto Bin. He's losing out for the time being. Call of the Forge God comes out. The knockback is interrupted thanks to the secondary Cyclone. Nogri is not going to be able to survive much longer as Bin flashes forward. First blood to Sooning in the finals. So this is the cross map play that you would expect. Sooning recognized that Downward is going to be passing towards the bot side of the map, playing for that second Drake, and they needed to make something happen top. I was concerned for Bin in He's that serious. trade, because you saw the amount of magic damage that Nogari can do did against the Did you hear the, the fear in my voice? Yes, it was going to get turned around. But they were able to get the kill. It did, of course, cost Bin his flash, but they will be able to convert this into some place. Now, I love this teleport from Showmaker, because it's actually going to mitigate the number of advantages that Suning can actually get. And look, Canyon is now path towards the mid lane. Now, of course, what this will do is it means that they can't drop the Herald bot, but it doesn't matter, because what they've gotten was the Drake, and that's what they wanted to. Two Drakes on the board now, 11 minutes in, we're looking at a 20 minute fourth Drake, uh, and this third Drake is definitely going to be a very contested uh, objective. So you can see how much damage is mitigated, but also Nogger using his Bellows Breath to avoid the initial knockup. Yeah. Then it's here where the second knockup comes through from Bin, so that Noggery cannot use his second proc of the ultimate, and then I like this use of the W uh, from SOFM to mitigate any potential auto attack damage that would get that lethal. 500 gold lead and a kill to Sooning. Four minutes until the Infernal Drake spawns, and we are playing for the Infernal Soul now. And as you pointed out, Vedius, 20 minute timer for that soul. So Sooning will need to contest on the third Drake. Um, it's something we were anticipating in our prep for this series that if these front to back team comps came through, that then you throw down at Drake 3, and if not, you absolutely have to do it at Drake 4. So three minutes time, we'll check what the state of the map looks like. So. Uh it's funny because we've been talking a lot about Damwon and what they've been doing well in the early game and some of the expectations, but Suning's also doing what they're supposed to do. 
patient play, respecting their opposition, not falling prey to any early mistakes and recognizing where their priority is and where they should be getting advantages. The best thing that Suning could do in this position is trade for a kill on the top side of the map. They don't need to fight for these early drakes. They don't need to fight for these heralds because that is the point at which they could put themselves at a bigger disadvantage. And the thing about down one is they're the type of team that they only need a single moment to take over the entire game. And we saw that multiple times against G2. One mistake and the game was theirs. So I love that we're seeing this respect and restraint from Suning because it's what their comp needs and it's what you need to do against a team like Dom. And look at what they have been able to do in the top lane. So Bin is now up around 20 CS. And while, you know, Huan Feng does continue to struggle in the bottom lane, Cyclone chucked out here defensively from Bin. And Call of the Forge God comes out. Great interrupt once again. But here comes Canyon. Bin, no flash. Remember, Nuggeries already committed his and the stand united from sofm will dissuade any further engagement but Nogari with the sunfire cape and free ass boots is doing a lot of damage to ben we can of course see that Nogari was quite confident making that play because canyon was on the top side of the map we'll drag him away from his clear a little bit but i think that in this situation it is absolutely fine and he's going to go back to clearing out his camps he's actually going to be brought mid lane. Now, this is a little unusual, not something that we usually see as Barrel goes to the all in and bot. Oh, Ash Arrow directly tags one. Fine, he flashed in a straight line, but Sword Arts re engage has locked up. Dom one, Ghost is going low, he's in trouble. True shot barrage, not going to be enough just yet as the first death is Sword Art. After Nogari completes the TP, turns the damage back onto Juan Fung, and he's forced away with his life. The volcanic rupture not going to stop Juan Fung escaping, and Dom one are on the board. And crucially, Showmaker interrupted the teleport from A. Angel. On the minimap, Angel was trying to match the TP that was coming out from Nogari. And as he tried to get sent to the bot, Showmaker was the one that got in the way, interrupted it, and prevented that play from being turned in Suning's favor. Because they were doing a great job. That two versus two did not look good for Ghost and Barrel initially. But if it wasn't for Nogari arriving, turning the play around, then that could have ended in disaster for Down One. So a lot of small pieces there working out in Down One's favor. Coming straight out of that replay, I'm keeping my eyes on the minimap, the Shockwave and the TP. Whether or not Angel, you know, how uh, aggressive Showmaker needed to be to interrupt it. And there we go. Thank you to the observers for catching it. Yeah, so that's what we were talking about. And again, that interrupt was really important because you can see how low Barrel and Ghost were in this situation. And had Angel arrived, this would have been a much worse situation for the Dam 1 bot lane, but they were able to pull it off. One minute until the next Drake. There's a couple of wards from Dam 1 placed inside Suning's jungle. No teleport for Angel, no teleport for Bin. And Huan Feng is now swapped to the top lane. Interesting. Whether or not Suning are going to contest this dragon in 40 seconds, that's what remains to be seen. So Suning did this against top esports as well, where they said, you know what, we're not actually going to fight you until the fourth three. We we don't care too much about the third one. We'll Bold play on the cotton. edge. No, I mean, it worked against top. They were able to pull it off. Um, but I think that they've just accepted that right now they're not stronger. Blade of the Ruin King, having been already completed for Ghost, they seem to want to try and make the cross map happen. And look, it looks like that they're going to trade the Rift Herald for it instead. Get the Rift Herald, try to get the top tower. And you've got to remember that with both these mid laners, they are heavy wave clear mids. Usually what this Rift Herald is used for in compositions like this is to break that mid tower. When there's so much wave clear on either side, it's a lot harder to approach. And so they're going to need that objective to actually break into it. But look, the Ezreal now pathing down. SOFM on his way as well. Let's see. I don't think that they will contest this based on the map state right now. Um, and I'm actually quite surprised that they've actually sent the Ezreal mid rather than just keeping him top. It looks like that they want to try and move Angel off onto a side lane, which is not usually where the Azir wants to be. Um, but for the time being, when playing up against an Orn, they probably think that for now it is absolutely fine. And what we're building towards, quick shot, is that fourth Drake fight. That will be oh. the play that ultimately, I think, is a large part decides the game. Because if Suning win that fight, I think their composition shows like how strong it will get as the game progresses, how much harder it will be to deal with, given how long range it is. Whereas if Dom one is able to win that fight. Obviously, they're going to get the full three, and a fight's That's happening. Bottom lane. Flash Cyclone coming out. Stand United brings SOFM to the bottom lane. Barrel's already down. Bin stays alive a few seconds longer before Ghost is able to take him out. Canyon continues the chase. He's already used the collateral damage, and Sword Art is waiting in the wings. He's got a solar flare available to fire, but not a lot of damage to follow up on. He manages to catch the Zenith Blade. That's a catch down to Canyon and SOFM with the help. He's going to be able to find it. That's a double kill for River Shade on Suning. Beautifully done from Suning, and look at how quickly they've ballooned this gold advantage. The game has been very even, but a bit of a skirmish happens in bot lane, and Suning used the Shen to their advantage. 
We like to see these type of plays. It's going to get a little bit more gold in their back pocket. And look at SOFM, 3-0-1. He's been involved in every single kill so far this game. And when we get the replay up, we'll have a look at exactly how that broke down. Style of me, the VCS player. Last one standing is making a statement again. He's one of the most talked about players at Worlds and all started here with Bin. So Bin knows that he has the Shen ultimate. So he dives in, recognizing that he can actually go for this all in. Of course, with Canyon's arrival, it may have been something that Damwon initially did not anticipate, but knowing that Sword Art was on the way as well meant that they could actually go for this re-engage. Damwon want to try and secure this tower, and that's what Suning take advantage of. Beautiful E from Sword Art. Yes. Just at the cusp of Canyon using his E, they're able to get themselves two quick kills, so beautifully done from the side of Suni. And right at the beginning of that replay, I actually missed live that Showmaker's Shockwave was sort of dodged, quote-unquote, by Han Feng. Ooh, he arrow. was able to use the Arcane Shift, and this time round does it again. So many heal has already been used, and Ghost with the Blade of the Rune King and Zeal is putting a lot of damage down. But yeah, Huan Feng escaped the ultimate commitment from Showmaker. And as we get into 20 minutes, it is a 3,000, 2,000 gold lead, rather, for Suning. They are down three dragons, and it's two and a half minutes. So they have to fight in the pit in two and a half minutes. But I think they're feeling pretty happy, because one of the things about Pantheon is you want to try and use him to get early advantages, because he's going to get outscaled by the Leona later on. Notice that Sora is actually very strong at this point in the game, and Beryl is pretty weak. Ooh, Shockwave comes through. Wave catches onto Sword Art. The tower falls as well, and that Solar Flare will not tag anyone. Damwon happy to just break the tower, the second of the game. And against a wave clear mid sort of like Azir, even though he hasn't really been assigned to that lane for the last few minutes, opening up access to Suning's jungle is very important for Darmwine. But I think, again, we're just going to be focusing in on this dragon. Trinity Force has been picked up by Ben. Almost uh, the Iceborne Gauntlet for Huan Fang. I'm just trying to see what other big items have been picked up. As we see, uh, Hessel with Fame will be able to interrupt the barrel. barrel just so to get in the way. So yep. cheeky and gets the Rift Herald down in the mid lane. I don't think they're going to be able to take this tower yet, though. Uh, the last stick going to come in from Ghost. But Beryl wants to get the reset. And I think that delaying support resets is very valuable because you look at the supports and the, uh, uh, and the inventories right now, zero wards in the back pocket of Beryl. He wants to get on the back foot, but Suning know this, which means they can invade in the enemy jungle, get deep vision, and they can start setting up for this Drake a minute and a half in advance. Nogri, of course, does have the teleport, but SOFM just going to cover so they can, they can take this bottom tier one and... The great thing about Azir is he can take these towers very quickly, especially with the Nash's Tooth completed. And if you just kind of look at the animization quick show, you can see lots of things are starting to yes. be done. We need to see that reset come in from Huan Feng to get that Iceborne Gauntlet, and then he should be good to go. I think that Suning is saying, right, we've got all the items that we need. Look at the minimap. Look at that beautiful vision. I'm actually just going to bring it up right now because they just used this opportunity to set up all these wards. They have the entire entrances covered, and now Dawon is going to have to invest their vision to clear, which means that when you get into the river, it's all going to be dark. Suning is in the best possible position to set up for this Drake. Let's see if they can secure it. Luden's Echo just completed by Angel a moment or two ago. The Hurricane picked up by Ghost. Black Cleaver picked up by Canyon. The Power Race as well as now Iceborne Gauntlet. It's 20 seconds until the Infernal Spawn Sword Art steps just into Darmwan territory. Various paint a picture for me on how this fight can start because it looks like Suning may be the first ones into the river. Well, it's the choke points that Suning want to try and control. If they can force people into these entrances to the river, then you can utilize the strong poke that an Azir and an Ezreal does have. They've already gotten the mid prior. They're going to force Nogari to TP in, and he's going to be reliant on acting as the face check tool. Notice that he's going to be the one to enter the river. He's going to be the one to face check along with Beryl to make sure that they can soak up the majority of the damage. The dragon is being stuck. Angel and Sword are looking for a flank. There's no flash on Bin just yet. If this drags out over time, he will be able to flash Cyclone the back line for Dom One. Sword Art's looking for an engage. He's got himself with a solar flare. Beryl gonna jump onto Bin. Cyclone already used. Beryl about to die. He flashes away defensively. Stays alive a few seconds longer. Now Bin's in trouble. It's a trade of a jungle for support. But it's Dom One Gaming that are split up. They're surrounded. It's with him. Catches a taunt onto Nogri. Here comes Sword Art and Angel. Huan Fung running for his life. Blast cones over the wall and Canyon is sticking onto Huan Fung. The red 
contest of Suningen in the river, and Dom One control the map. They control the river, and they take down One Fang. I think Suning tried to flank when they just didn't need to. They want to be playing front to back, but Angel and Sword Art just weren't involved in the fight. The good news for Suning is that they're still alive. So SOFM still has the smite. Let's see if they can take away this objective. The glide, the divide, the Emperor's divide is available. There it is! Jumping one, two, three, court goes golden and stays alive a few seconds longer, but the damage and the survivability from Showmaker and Ghost is wrecking Suning. They get themselves kills. They set themselves up for the soul, but here comes Bin. He's going to teleport in. Grand Starfall comes down. The Infernal Drake has been stopped for now, and Bin will get dropped once again, with Darm One now turning their attention back to the Infernal Drake looking to secure the Infernal Soul. I think that in that fight, Damwon just played better. They recognized that they needed to stay grouped. They saw Bin out of position, and his ultimate was forced very early onto a single member. There wasn't cohesion coming out from Suning in that fight, and Damwon looked to take advantage of it. And this is the crucial moment that I want to draw your attention, because look at the minimap. Azia and Leona are just nowhere near right now. They're trying to set up a flank, but Damwon warded for it, which means that they know they have a numbers advantage in this situation. They can take Bin out. And, like, the fight is split for Suning. There is no front to back. There's easy access onto Huanfeng, because Angel isn't doing anything. Yeah. So Suning, while they did have the a really good setup. I think that they tried to do too much in the fight, and they end up getting punished by Dharma. A little too over-eager, maybe? A little too creative? You know, we talked in draft 20 minutes ago about how both comps could be played front to back, and Ben didn't have that flash. I wonder if it was a consideration. So we come out of the play. Eight kills to six. It's still two towers apiece, and Dharma have got themselves the Infernal Soul. This makes the Elder Dragon 28 minutes a terrifying prospect. But we have seen this World Championship already. It is possible to win a game when you concede the soul to your opponents. Suning fairly, you know, re they'll remember that. that. Yeah. Okay, familiar with it, thank you. But it is a very uphill battle because of the benefits and the bonuses that Darmon have accrued for themselves. Certainly will. Now, the arrow will come out from Ghost as they look to push up mid, because now Baron is obviously the next objective yeah. to play for. They're keeping Noggery on the weak side of the map while keeping Ghost and Barrel in mid to keep this pressure and have them move in through the river. And you can see how dark it is for Sooning. They're very afraid of approaching this objective. And just look at the positioning of Canyon right now. He's walking into the enemy jungle, stealing away camps where he can. And he's incredibly powerful at this point in the game as well. Like, down one, even though the gold is very even, it's obviously very deceptive. Yes. <laughs> because Noggery is the one that's kind of at that deficit, but he's still, like, there to do his job. Where the gold is right now is on top of Ghost, on top of Showmaker, and they are, of course, very strong. That doesn't mean that Angel and Huanfeng don't have any damage, but this Infernal Soul is really going to make the difference uh, between the two. Infernal Soul plus Graves, Orianna, Ash, Pantheon. Yes. I think they're very happy uh, with that buff. But now they just need to pick up the uh, Baron and try to move it down. We've already talked about the wave clear that Angel's Azir has on the Rift. Obviously, the Ezreal as well, from relatively long range. Can do it okay, but once you get that Baron buff secured, significantly harder to hold on to your base, to hold on to those inhibitor turrets. And they're still out of turret range. It's two towers apiece at 25 minutes. This is what we expected from yeah. the drops, you know, yeah. fighting around dragons, skirmishes and team fights that then lead to big advantages in the game. And so this was something that uh, we heard the analyst desk talking about and how flexible Dan one actually are as a team, because what they'll do is they make these pivots in the draft to try and counteract what you like to do. And they're like, well, okay, if Suning like to play for Drake, then that's exactly what we'll do. And we saw how they approached it. They controlled the early Drakes. They were the ones utilizing the strength of their early lane prowess to build these advantages. But now Suning is back on the offensive. They've caught Showmaker out of position. He has no flash, but they're too afraid to commit for now. Yeah, look at the respect. As soon as Suning realized they're stepping into the darkness, the call was to back away. You could clearly see the comms deciding that factor. With um, so much at stake in game one of the finals of the best of five, I respect that um, ability to pull back. They did get the Grand Star full out of barrel. It's not the biggest win, of course, because we're still two and a half away from Elder. And it, it's felt to me all game, Vedius, that Dom are pretty comfortable. Just play this at their pace. They've, they've been very calculated. I said many minutes ago, they're like one step ahead yep. of Suning. And um, they're now just going to play this patiently, push some vision into the northern quadrant. And, and once they've set up some vision, then can make some plays for Baron. Yeah, and, and I think that they're afraid of just starting Baron blindly because yeah. that's how they lose, right? Um, they may even wait for Elder, but 
Like, they kind of have a number of options right now. For the time being, Barrel has to be very careful. What he's doing is a little dangerous. Well, same kind. Oh, yeah. uh, Bin is a little overextended. Call of the Forge God comes out. Cyclone will buy well some time. Flash is still available. Side steps away from the collateral damage. That's a secondary knockup onto Canyon. SOFM stands United, brings in the support, and Canyon goes down. The Ash Arrow right between the upsides. Angel committed the teleport for this, as now Barrel is down as well. Nogri continues to be the target as Angel and SOFM look to run him down. And Sword Art's coming in from behind. Oh, Solar Flare has already been used. Showmaker's got the Flash available, but there's no Shockwave. Shield of Daybreak to the face. True Shop Barrage is dodged by the, uh, the Hourglass. And there comes SOSM, the Taunt. The first death on the side of Suning is then going to be Sword Art as they turn around, and Nuggery goes down. Ghost is the last man standing, and Suning find a team fight after Bin was caught. Excellent use of the teleports from Suning, and just a great play from the Shen. Darmon were afraid to just commit to the Baron, so they wanted to try and find a pick. The problem with trying to find a pick is that there's a Shen in the game. Yes. His ability to join from the other side of the map means that it's not as easy as Darmon would want to be able to just find an easy pick on a side lane. Suning are able to punish, and they were even able to catch Ballot. You noticed it in the river, quick shot but they were able to find that pick, and now they're on the Baron. They're going to be able to cleanly take this one down, and all of a Ooh. sudden, Suning are back in the game. Well, not only back in the game, they've got uh, 30 seconds before the Elder is up. Domwon can feel that one. They're going to interrupt at least one of the recalls. Remember, teleports were committed, and Stand United is still on cooldown. Do Domwon try to rush the Elder? It does look like SOFM and Sword are still in the Rift, and it feels like Suning should be able to contest. Yeah, they will. The Baron buff recall timers is going to give them more than enough time to be able to go back to base, get back out on the map. And I love what Sword Art's doing right now. Standing in mid lane just so that there are Baron-empowered minions, so Ghost cannot clear the wave as quickly as he wants. Now, Darmon do have initial setup on the objective. They got a couple of control wards with Barrel. He was forced to reset to replenish his wards. Notice as well, Deathcap not yet completed for Showmaker, whereas Angel has already finished his third item. The Leandris has come through, and now you're kind of looking at this comp from Suning, and you're like, well, I do think the scaling is pretty good on their side. We already talked about the front to back, and this is just what I want to see from Suning. No more fancy flanks. Yes. Just take them, uh, face them from the front, and just kill whoever's in front of you initially. I think that they have the tanks to do it. They have the backline damage to do it, and I like what I'm seeing from Bin now, pushing in the bot lane, generating that extra source of pressure, forcing down one to make a decision. Damwon, what's the choice going to be? Well, they haven't committed yet. Wanfeng's not with Suning either. If Damwon pull the trigger right now, Wanfeng will be a little late to the party. Bin starts to back away, and it is still just this standoff at the Elder Drake. Uh, Wanfeng stepping back. Ghost's Enchanted Crystal Arrow is available, and that is going to be one of the tools that Damwon can use to initiate his starter look for a pick. Suning, 3,000 gold up, but the Elder Dragon buff with four elemental drakes is not something you can concede. Oriana just did a sneaky base. I think that Dawn1 is trying to take advantage of the fact that Suning don't have full information here, and they're trying to buy time. Oriana getting that death cap is going to be so huge for the upcoming fight, and Suning are not going to punish Dawn1 for it. So a bit cheeky there from Dawn1. Beryl now going to do the same thing as he looks to replenish his wards. Notice that Sword Art also out of vision for the time being. Is he going to reset as well? He's actually going to stay in mid, so Dom won. They're going to, they, they played this well, even though they recognize that right now they don't feel super strong. Oh, this, oh, this was the replay that happened earlier. This was yes. them catching Barrel out as he tried to roam towards Bot. Now Suning, they're going to start this off. They know that they don't have the restock on Vision. They're going to kick this one off. They don't have the push in mid, but Bin, now Bin is on the flank. And I think this is a much better position for Dam one to, uh, for Suning rather to be in, but they've warded for the flank. Well, let's see what happens. Nogri has not used Call of the Forge God. Sword Art has been caught out. He catches a Zenith Blade, jumps down onto Ghost. Here comes Bin. The Elder Drake is still the focus of Suning, and Bin goes in with a Cyclone. He almost picks up the kill, manages to survive a few seconds longer, but Suning get the Elder Drake so far at the cost of only Bin. They're going to try to escape, and now Beryl jumps in with the Grand Starfall, gets caught up by the Taunt, and Angel will send him to the Fountain. Angel gets blown up by Canyon, and now SOFM is in trouble. At the same time, Juan Fung picks Picks up a kill onto Ghost, and SOFM is running for his life. He will get taken down. Four 
deaths for two, but the Elder goes the way of Suni. Woo! Now this is a world final. This is what we wanted to see. Both teams going toe to toe, even though Suning, it feels like they're losing. They continue to accelerate the gold. They're the ones with the gold advantage. They're the ones with carries, continuing to get more and more items. One member gets the Elder Drake. This is, of course, is not ideal for Suning. Oh, oh, but can Showmaker shot save wave. it? Flash is not available for Showmaker. Continues to step forward. One Fung's Mystic Shots don't find the targets. He's shut down. Solo kill by Showmaker. Beautiful stuff from Showmaker, punishing Huan Fong in the mid lane, and now there are no Elder Drakes on the side of Suning. That's going to completely remove that objective, and let's have a look back at how this fight all started off. Sword Art kind of gets caught off on the side lane, not really in the river with his team, but he gets onto the back line, but also gets blown up immediately. The power of the Infernal Soul right there. Then we're getting to see the damage of Bin on the back line, but he doesn't have the support of the Shen this time round, so Darmon are just staying together as a group. Now Darmon's goal is to just catch off the stragglers. They use the Pantheon ultimate to stop Angel from disengaging. SFM wants to try and keep his mid laner alive, and I think that if they do keep Angel alive here, there's a world in which they can turn that fight around, but because Darmon get the shutdown, they're able to take out SOFM as well, and they're able to remove all traces of the Elder Drake. 26 kills in 32 minutes. Four minutes until the next Elder Drake, a minute and a half until the next Baron buff, and I am loving this game one in the finals. Constant team fights around the objectives, but you can also see and feel the respect, the tension, maybe the fear in terms of how they're treating these engagements. Sooning have come out on top for the most part on the last couple of engagements. Well, what I think we've been seeing here is that Danwon have kind of played their traditional style of control but they needed to take a bit of risk when it came to the Baron. And that's when they went for that pick in the bot lane and obviously things didn't pan out. And what we're seeing from Suning is that kind of young blood confidence that we've seen yeah. from them throughout the tournament where like they don't really play with any hesitation. When they see their opportunity, they're gonna go for it. And I think that they've been doing a great job of that. And it's keeping this game very close, even though they're fighting against an Infernal Soul. Yes. Arguably one of, if not the strongest Dragon Souls in the game, like, the fact that they're able to be this resilient is large part because of their comp, but because they're willing to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Damwon. They're not conceding these objectives, and now the next Baron is going to be very crucial. Yeah, but Vedius Suning have been that resilient all tournament long. Freak said it last week, the most impressive run of Worlds so far. They find themselves in the final against Damwon. Suning have been able to upset and surprise at nearly every single stage, and already in game one, for me and my eyes, I am surprised and excited by what they are showing in this first game. It is still not clear which team will win. It is balancing on a knife edge and it will oh, come down to the Ooh. team fight. Shockwave catches and Sword Art is dead before he can do anything. No flash, no solar flare, no support for Sunin. Wow, and Dom One just blow up Sword Art. He's supposed to be the front line, but again, that is the power of the Infernal Soul. It just melts through these tanks and the items are just so strong for Dom One. A small mistake like that could be all that they need to secure this Baron. Uh, Stand United was used by SOFM. That's a catch once again on to him from Beryl. Ben is waiting in the wings now. If Domon can get caught by Cyclone, that is problematic. Ben has got Flash available to him. No vision inside the pit. Suning starts to step forward and Beryl is the first target. 4,000 hit points on Baron. They peel away for a brief second and turn back in a chip away. The Ash Arrow catches one Fung. Domon pick up the Baron. Now they're trying to escape with their lives. Angel has got himself the Emperor's Divide, but no target and they get the kill on Sword Art, they get the Baron, and they get out unscathed. I like the positioning from Showmaker a lot in that fight. He was hovering towards the bot side of the river and just basically zoning both SOFM and Bin from the pit, utilizing the ball. It meant that if they got too close, he was going to look to one-shot them, and it was a very real possibility. We've already seen what damage he can do on to Sword Art. So Good patient play there from Darmon. Sooning once again going to be put on the back foot. But you know what Baron doesn't help with? Taking an Elder Drake. So Sooning, they're going to look to just try and stall for a little while longer. They're going to try and push out these waves. They just took the mid tier one finally after 35 minutes. Yes, three towers apiece. And uh, of course, you do still get some small advantages from the Baron buff, which is going to be beneficial for Darmon. But in terms of itemization, very close, very similar across the board. And it all comes down to the execution of these fights. Darmon kind of have all the advantages that they could need to win this next Elder fight, but 
so far, that hasn't really proven enough to end this game for them. And all credit to Suning, despite being down in Infernal Soul, they are still keeping themselves relevant here. I mean, the War Mugs were just picked up by SOFM, Death Dance sitting for both Bin, as well as one Fung, the GA for Bin as well. Um, his stopwatch cyclone combo was almost enough to kill Ghost yep. in the previous dragon fight. 20 seconds till Elder is up, but if you look at the map state this time, Dom One have got control because of yes. the Baron empowered minion. So yes. this means it's significantly harder for Suning to not only contest, but to actually start that fight. If anything, Dom One's basically saying, listen, if you're going to fight, you're going to fight on our terms. You're going to play around our lanes. And we're going to make it very difficult, as you rightly said, to actually start that objective. Because we know that's the way in which we lose. So instead, we're going to leverage our Baron buff. We still have a minute of it left. We're going to take as much away from you as possible. And in the meantime, we're going to gain full vision control over your side of the map. Look at all these wards in the enemy jungle now they're gonna look for a pick on the bin all right bin does have flash available to him that's the ultimate thrown down he's holding on they to go it what they want to quick shot that ult is now gone from bin that backline threat is disappeared and let's see if suning i don't think they're even going to be in a position to contest this because it's already gone late. they're way too late they're way too late elder dragon with infernal soul picked up by dom one they still have themselves the baron buff as well and the ash arrow goes right between suning they're able to escape call the forge guard knocks up one fine but sword arts the target for now he gets dashed on and jumped on and shot in the face by Canyon taken it down, 16th kill for Dom One, and with the Elder, with the Baron, they're now going to start <laughs> the play's top lane as so well. So Suning pushed in mid and they pushed in bot, and they tried to give Dom One as few waves as possible. Angel and TP top to try and clear that one out, but Dom was like, nah, 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 not that one. Showmaker with a fast TP to match, and now they have the wave that they need to break into the base. Can they finish it on this push? That's what we're going to find out. The inhibitor is going to be the next focus. Baron in part minions for just a few seconds longer. That will time out right about now. Elder Drake is available. If anyone from Suning goes low, they will go down. They will die. True Shot Barrage. Fired from one fun does not do a whole lot, but the minions are cleared out. Dom One have to wait for the next conga line to make its way into Suning's base. And Dom One have got themselves a tangible taste <laughs> of victory after a hard fought 40 minutes. Wow. Well, unfortunately for Dom One, because their Baron buff disappeared, they can't keep the push in. They also will likely have their Elder disappear, which means that we're probably in for one more fight. Quick shot, the game isn't quite over yet. My word, what an intense game one. And I wonder if this will set the trend for the series. Will it be very much about Drakes? Will we see an adaptation? Will we see more of this early game focus? Like, still so many questions to be had about how these two teams go toe to toe. But what we can say for sure is that Darm one in terms of their objective setup and their team fighting is still a monster that is difficult to deal with. But Suning are finding ways. The question is, can they find a way when pretty much Everything is stacked against them. Yes. No soul. <laughs> like Against the, Baron and Elder. Yes. It's like they've been able to hold the line for now, but now they also have lost their inhibitor in the top lane. Full builds are being completed across the board. Like, it's going to be tough for Suning, but... They've, they've proven miracles before. Yes, Let's see have. if they can do it again. And of course, on the side of Suning, um, you know, they did have side selection this game. Uh, whoever loses game one picks the side selection for game two. This is the best of five in the final, and Bin will be forced to run for his life. Grand Starfall comes down once again. Call of the Forge God comes out. We'll find a knockup. Showmaker running from the side. Bin is going to continue to escape, and the Ash Arrow from Ghost was optimistic. Not going to be long-range stun this time, but the Cyclone is not available for the ensuing fight. Elder has timed out, and the Super Minions are currently being caught by Angel. This is good for Suning, but they're at a numbers disadvantage if a fight breaks out. Clever collapse from Dom One as they actually tried to punish Bin as he recalled. And now the collapse, the engage. They jump onto SOFM and not going to be able to do much more damage through that Spirit's Refuge in the tower. Stays alive for now. The Minion Wave was cleared out relatively quickly. Suning 3,000 gold down. 40 seconds to the next Baron, three minutes to the next Elder, and they live to fight another day. They are losing every single inch of Summoner's Rift. Yep. Slowly, more and more is being taken away from Suning, and you can see even if they do get the Elder, that doesn't suddenly mean that they win the game. They need a big team fight victory to be able to swing this game back in their control. But it is possible, just very, very difficult. <laughs> uh, wow, what an intense game one. Now, let's take a look at the vision setup. 10 minutes to Baron. Do you think Dom One need the Baron Ooh, to win? Wait, look at Wukong, look at Wukong. He's being a little sneaky here. He's just sitting in that brush, hoping that someone from Dom One 
looks to face check. There has been a control ward every single fight at that point. But the problem is that the Baron is alive. So Domo don't really care about the bottom side of the map right now. They care about the top side. Oh, so much tension. There are more Elder Dragons and Barons killed in this game than we've seen any previous worlds. And there's no indication it's over yet. Bin will go golden for a second. Where is he going, Vision? Uh, Observer's trolling me a touch there, actually. He backed away, out of sight. I was so focused on Ghost and whether he was going to jump on him or not. There we go. Good setup from Dom1 here. They're using Barrel to zone. Sooning out of the pits. There is a control ward now inside. Sooning going to have to pull the trigger very, very soon. Here comes Juan Funk. Ben is making his way up through the river. Keep your eyes on that minimap. And Dom1, they back away, recognizing this time they don't have the same level of information and control so they don't expose themselves to the risk of the engage. Well, also, Sooning learned the hard way that if they face check an area of the map that doesn't belong to them, they will just insta-die. Yes. TP now coming in back to mid lane. Okay, and this is they're going to be the focus. The next Baron, the next Elder can win. Both teams have secured themselves an Elder. We've seen a Baron as well, and now... Canyon goes back to the objective. Beryl can come in with that Grand Starfall. So, Bin just reset, but he does have the teleport. What Sooning need to do is reset for wards, and that's the window that Dom want to try and take advantage of. Notice that there are no control wards left. Arrow comes through. And so FM gets caught up, flashes away, and he's down! Nukri gets the final hit for Dom One. No smite inside the pit, but the Cyclone, the Emperor's Divide, the Solar Flare are huge. They have to be flawless. That is Angel being forced away. Beryl is running him down. The Baron goes low true shot barrage is not going to be enough for the baron is secured by dom one gaming they turn their attention onto angel who is forced to use the emperor's divide the slide the glide he's holding on to the flash and he gets popped by beryl two members of sooning are down and dom one with baron empowered minions they're going to push into the base they might be looking for the nexus and it was the pick that dom one have been looking for they shut down sofm the smite disappears the risk of a steal gone with it and now with dom one the kill lead the baron in their back pocket and and an empty inhibitor standing in their way to look into end game one. It has felt like a long time coming, a hard fought victory, and Dom1 are setting themselves up by taking down the first Nexus turret. They will get themselves the GA out of bin. The knock up onto Juan Fung and he jumps away. The Cyclone goes up, but there's just not enough damage. A lot is returned back onto Ghost. His GA is still up. The first Nexus turret is down, and I think the Showmaker Shockwave did not really do much. Juan Fung is taken out in the backside of the fight, and SOFM will respawn only to die and watch his Nexus explode. Dom1 strike first in finals. Whew. That was an intense back and forth between Dom1 and Suning. But for the majority of it, it really felt like Dom1 were in control. It was Suning finding creative ways of delaying, coming back, punishing these small decisions that Dom1 were making. And I feel like that if they just played that fourth Drake fight a little bit differently, if they didn't try to go for that clever flank, if they just played more standard front to back, this could have been Sooning's game. And I think that what this tells me is that Sooning is ready to play. One of the questions that Yamato asked is like, has this team been challenged yet? Well, they're at the World Finals. Maybe they just can't be challenged. I think Sooning is showcasing that this team definitely can be challenged. Longest game at Worlds 2020, clocking it at 45 minutes and 29 seconds. Two Elder Drakes, three Barons, four Elemental Drakes. And this entire game was defined from the get-go about those team fights and the objective battles. That's not a huge surprise based on how we've seen the tournament and these teams evolve, but now side selection again stays with Sooning. And the, the next question in my mind is, what happens next? What is the adjustment? Where does Sooning go from here? Because I think if you were to run that back and execute differently, it could have gone Sooning's way multiple times. Yep. Do they feel that? That's what we have to find out. Yeah, I think that right now, team fight execution just seems to be in Dom One's favor. They just seem to be playing those fights around the Drakes a little bit better than Sooning. But in the course of a series, you can get better, you can grow. And I think the Sooning's whole story of this world has been growth. So let's see if they can do it within this series. We're about to find out as we go to a break. Please enjoy this short preview of Wild Rift, a new 5v5 mobile for mobile. It should look pretty familiar to League on PC, but it's been fully redesigned for new platforms. European fans, keep an eye out for access in early December with the Americas following soon after.